Good evening, everyone. At five o'clock, so we'll start our meeting. I appreciate everyone's attendance. Uh, I need uh, roll call will indicate that all the board members are present. And item number two, approval of today's agenda. I need a motion to approve today's agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, item three, action items. There are none tonight. Item four. Wow, that's the quickest we got to item four. I thought we were going to have a <laughs> record meeting there. Uh, this is going to be interesting. I, this is, I uh, want to have a roundtable discussion with the uh, building principals, which I'll have everybody go around and introduce themselves here in a minute, uh, just so that uh, on the tape and people that watch on TV can understand who you are. We're going to try with the electronics. Uh, I'll eventually leave mine on and everybody else will turn their mics on. So everybody will be able to be heard tonight for sure. We'll have to watch and see what the camera does because usually the camera tries to follow us around, but I think that's going to be better than us pushing and pausing. I think we'll have a better discussion. And so I want to talk about the district uh, mission, vision, and values, and then we'll get into some discussion about uh, culture in the buildings and any other topics that are important to the principals. We'll see how this goes, and I'd hope at some point to do this with a group of teachers as well. So we, we, and we can start with uh, those two groups and see how, this, see how that goes. So I do appreciate everybody coming uh, tonight. Ashley, you want to put up my this first slide there? So again, we want to talk about uh, vision, mission, and values. And, and the board had a meeting in, in January where we discussed this. And I think it's important that everybody understands why we have a vision, a mission, and values. And that's so that everyone that works for the district on behalf of the students is at least rowing in the same direction. We all know where we're trying to get to. And, it, and it's a guiding document. It's, it's not uh, detailed specific, but it lets everybody know what is important to us for our students and so that all the decisions that we make head that direction. So you want to, uh, next slide. And I just want to remind everybody of our Pathways to Success document that we've had now for several years. Uh, we've made some changes to that, none, none too recently though. And the, the vision and the mission and the values have to, have to align with, with this document. Uh, next slide. So I want to start out with uh, talking about what's our current reality, because I think we need to know where we are before we know where we need to get to. So I've asked Kathy and Mary Jo to go over a few things for us. Okay, I, I thought I would start with this quote. It's from Robert DeFore and uh, Robert Marzano. And I think it particularly, it's a powerful quote, but it also really has, pertains well to our district. Um, for those of you who don't know, Robert DeFour is the, Rick DeFour is, sorry, it's Rob, yeah, got it, um, is the head of Solution Tree. And Solution Tree is, um, has put on the PLC institutes that we have went to at the district. And very powerful for the teachers that have went there. They come back and they're like, wish more people could see them. Um, so we did bring one of the Solution Tree presenters, Tim Brown here, uh, two or three years ago, and present it to the entire district, and fabulous um, feedback on that presentation. And in fact, it was mentioned in Thought Exchange, I noticed quite a few times of every love Tim Brown. Um, so I'm just giving you the context of who are these people that are quoting this. And uh, Robert Marzano, not Rick, Robert, um, he is just the instructional genius nationwide. Everybody follows Marzano. We study his instructional strategies, um, his research. It's 30 plus years of work. Um, so they, these two together wrote a book, Rick and Robert, and here's their assertion, that one of the most powerful things a school can do to help enhance student achievement is to guarantee that specific content is taught in specific courses and grade levels. This might seem obvious, but in actual practice, few districts and schools can make this guarantee. And so I thought that's just a good reminder of when we head into our current reality and we look at that data is it's a lot of work. And it's a lot of work by teachers, um, administrators, everybody to make student achievement a reality of where we want it to be. So the first slide um, here is 
uh, grade three, and we're just comparing it to the big nine, so everybody here can see the reality of where Albert Lee is. And so the first column with the percentages is the percent proficiency. And this is proficiency on the um, MCA third grade reading test of all the students who have met or exceeded the, the grade level standards for third grade. And you can see the state average for Minnesota was 58.9%, and Albert Lee was just six tenths below that at 58.3%. Um, prior to the, a couple years prior to that, a little bit lower. So we have a upward trend um, with our reading scores. The more exciting piece of this chart that I absolutely love, which really talks about what Rick and Robert, um, in their quote that I read, really portrays is that we're meeting the needs of all of our students. And so the next column there is the, the percentage of the free and reduced population. It's about 144 kids in third grade. Um, and their percent proficiency on the MCA, which was 51.4%. 50, you can see we're 11 percentage points above the state average, and we're third in the big nine. So, and again, that trend went up the last um, three years. And this speaks a lot to this just didn't happen because we just said, hey, we want this to happen. It happened because of all the teachers, the collaboration, the training, and the focus on having a guaranteed and viable curriculum. And I just want to remind everybody that when we talk about guaranteed and viable curriculum, it means that if I'm a third grade teacher in one building or even across the hall from a third grade teacher, that we are doing the same third grade level standards uh, to all of our students. It's our promise to our students that that's what we are instructing on. It's not my favorite unit that I want to do in this class, and this, this class is doing this because this teacher loves this. It's a guarantee that no matter what teacher you have, it is our promise to, to you, that student, the families, this is what we'll, we will be instructing. And, um, okay, Kathy changed the slide. My time must be up. <laughs> Um, I, I think this just speaks for itself. Um, we um, take a look at our big nine reading scores this last year, um, and we see where we are with our free and reduced population. Um, and this is kind of a heartbreaker for me uh, because we can do better, as our students can, as our staff can. Um, and so... Um, when we were talking a little earlier today, this is one of those slides that uh, sits in front of us as we go throughout the year, and it's our motivation to do better by students. And the other thing just that I, I should have said when we looked at the grade three going to the grade eight, we have sp spent a lot of time and a lot of focus in the district on elementary we all admit that, we all know what it occurred, and now that focus is saying, okay, elementary, we spent a lot of curriculum resources, a lot of training, um, y y staff is collaborating, we're all doing the same thing, we got a guaranteed and viable curriculum in our content areas, now that shift is moving up to the next levels. So I just think that should be said. And then here's the same thing, you can just see, I don't need to say as much on this slide, um, but again, the math scores, third in the big nine for just proficiency of our students who are meeting or exceeding the state standards. Um, and then our free and reduced population scored very well. And I think that speaks to a lot of one of the focus and research things that we said we need to change in our district in elementary is that every student, all students, SPED, gifted, Title I students, will all get tier one core instruction, and core instructions means grade level instruction. And then from there, if, um, if a student needs an additional scoop of instruction because they're just not at grade level and we gotta get them there, then they might go to a, a supplemental teacher who will um, help them with reading or math, whatever it may be. And so I think that speaks very clear to our focus on what we do is consistent, that everybody gets core instruction, 
and when that student moves to a tier two setting, they're getting that same type of instruction, just at a more intense uh, level, so. So again, our motivating factor, we've spent a lot of time and energy and, and dollars and staffing and interventions and supports at our elementary level. Um, and, uh, and now the time is to focus on our secondary level. And so again, as we look at our math scores, where we land, um, we can do better. Um, I think that uh, there's a, a lot of discussion as who's to blame. This isn't a blame, it's just a reality. And so do we have a guaranteed and viable curriculum? And that has been our goal this year is to, to take a deep look at, in particular this year we started with English language art standards, seven through 12, do they align? Our next step, we'll, we'll be taking a look at math. Um, we can see where we're at. I, at. We are winding down testing, and we um, have spent, uh, I think, a lot of time and energy on testing. Um, and it's not the end all and be all, but it is one measure. Uh, I was rereading some MDE material today, and I think um, we need to keep that in mind. It is one measure. We have other uh, tests that our secondary students take. We also have um, failure rates and graduation rates and ACT test scores and certainly the formative assessments teachers um, engage in every day at our high school. Uh, had a really, um, a really some good emails and discussions from teachers at the high school who are using technology in new and different ways. And so it's just, we know where we're at and it's time to move forward. And so again, another another uh, piece of information for us to keep in mind as we think about the work we've asked teachers to do this year, which was really hard work. Thanks, any questions for those two? Comments? Anybody? All right, would you mind um, turning that off? There, there it goes, it, it works fine, you just leave it like that is. So again, I think that's a good check of where we are, and again, it's not all gloom and doom. We've made some good strides in some other areas, but we want to continue to improve so that we're on the tops of both of those lists, and, and I think that's why we're all here. Um, that's our current mission statement, and I'll admit I don't know when that was originated. Maybe somebody might help me, but that's been there for quite, for quite a few years, before Bill's time, so that's a long time. Um, <laughs> So that's the current one, and, I, and before we get going, why don't we go around and could I have you just introduce yourselves and tell us what building you're from, just, and we'll see if the camera follows. If not, everybody will just be able to at least hear you. So, Dan, you want to go first? So, I'm Diane Schultz. I am the new principal at Sibley Elementary and started this last, it's been about a year ago that I was hired, so I'm happy to be here. So this is a great Thank opportunity. You. I love it here. Karen? I'm Karen Smolenski, and I'm the principal at Hawthorne. I'm Mark Grossclaus, I'm the high school principal. I'm Tanya Prouty, I'm the area learning center principal. Steve Kovacs, middle school principal. Johanna Thomas, principal at Halverson Elementary. Okay, and, and Nick uh, from Lakeview couldn't make it tonight, so we do appreciate everyone's attendance. Let's go to the next slide. So then that was a vision statement, a suggested vision statement we had from the board meeting in January. And, I'll, and I'll, again, I'll read it in case uh, you can't see it on TV. Individualized educational opportunities and maximum achievement for all students. Uh, next slide. And then we came up with these suggested values. We value academic and extracurricular excellence, safe and healthy schools, effective and efficient operations, innovation and agility, and the community partnerships. Next slide. And then our primary value, the needs of the student come first. Next slide. And so then this is the mission statement that we had come up with at the board meeting. And again, I'll read it. In an environment where the needs of the student come first, we are committed to providing all students with educational opportunities that foster individual academic growth and social skills. So we had those from our board meeting and asked Dr. Funk and Lori to take them to the uh, cabinet meeting and then the principals took them to the buildings and discussed it with the teachers. And so that's the feedback that we're trying to get tonight is what did they think about what we sent them? How much wordsmithing did they do to it? Uh, what did they change? What they liked or didn't like? So next slide. 
So from the administration to the building level, this is what was sent for a mission statement, to ensure individual academic, social, and emotional growth that leads to engaged citizens and lifelong learners. And we can go to the next one. So uh, if we could go around by, uh, by a building, and we'll just start with Halverson. What was the reaction to that? What, what did you hear? How did you feel about that? I think the biggest takeaway that um, some of our teachers came up with was was the word citizens and the definition of citizens and I think where we were starting from was citizenship um, but their comments were that um, the word citizen can be misinterpreted by students and parents um, we do have a lot of students in our buildings that may not be citizens, immigrants in other categories, whether it's work, political, or they're working on citizenship. Uh, so that was a word that, that uh, came forward in my building. Other than that, there was uh, quite a bit of discussion about using the word insure. Um, and again, I think that goes back to the discussion of guaranteeing that curriculum and those opportunities for students. Um, that came forward quite a bit. And um, rather than the word individual, uh, to ensure individual, maybe think about um, saying all students, to ensure all students will achieve. Was there a suggestion for a change to citizen? Was there yes, there was. Um, community members was the suggestion. All right, thanks. Um, next. What I did was I, I extended two invitations to my staff to get some feedback on the draft that was given. I did not provide ample time, though, to really do a discussion that is really beneficial to have productive conversations about what's valuable to us and what do we envision for kids. I did get this particular piece, though, up here. And I, I sometimes, a, a, a Little response is a, an agreement, because usually I always hear something if they don't agree. But um, I think the important piece is here is that people do value the whole lifelong learning piece. I mean, we are really creating, we just want people to love learning. That's what we want of our kids. We don't, this just isn't a one year or one day or whatever. We really want it to be a, an intrinsic love of learning. And the other pieces were, um, the feedback I did get was really, um, some verbiage or verbs, I should say, that are, are, are powerful. I mean, empowering our kids, expecting our kids, encouraging our kids. So um, a little more proactive verb choice in there. But um, again, um, supporting the, pro the three prongs of social, emotional, and academic growth. So. Okay, thank you. No advances, yeah. Um, did Nick happen to give you any comments or from Lakeview? Just, what's Just what's on the slide, okay. So it looks like they changed ensure to promote. And that's what comment one is. Concerns. And, I th and I think I understand item two is, it, it's, it's good to say you wanna do that, but if you don't have the resources, then we at least need to know that, or how much of that we can do, okay. Uh, Sibley? Yeah, the staff, first of all, was very appreciative to have some input and just say, this is, this is great that we're all on the same page, that we all are driving and moving towards the same goal. So that was a great thing. They were, I, it was the best discussion I've had with the staff almost all year. They were just really excited to pick it apart and say, they were excited to say, we're all going in the same direction. So that was one great thing. Um, and they dis discussed how, okay, everybody, kind of like the guaranteed and viable curriculum, it, it holds us together as a district, and where are we all going, and we're all going in the same spot. Um, and the biggest, you know, there are a couple of wording changes there, but the biggest piece is, you know, we're all about academic, and we wanna make those grow, those changes, but again, like um, Lakeview there, 
really looking at it, accomplishing that social emotional piece and that mental health piece. And we have a lot of kids really looking at the whole child, not just academically, but wanting to look at the whole child. And so we have some plans and places of building to look at those things, but we're excited to see that across the district. Again, we're all coming, doesn't matter which building you're in, we're all going in the same direction, so. Was, was there any comments about insure? There wasn't. Wasn't? Nope. Okay. Mm -mm. nope. Okay. All right, next slide. Steve? No, I think you're good. Well. Well, I, I um, to be honest, I, I have to tell you that I apologize. I, I did not have a, a conversation at a staff meeting, and, um, and it wasn't done on purpose. I didn't purposely, I just, I dropped the ball. And, um, but I did, um, the comments that I have up there is, is mostly just having different conversations with staff um, since we received this and, um, and today. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I don't know if it's a kind of a secondary thing. I think, um, I, I, you know, you can see the, state, the staff thought it looked fine as, as stated and, and there, the wordsmithing was some conversations that I had, but there was no specifics to, of words that they would change in there. I do, um, and it says Steve's comments include, I think the, you know, the, the big piece will come as we have, hopefully we have more opportunities to talk about those, uh, the vision and the values and the, and you know, in my mind, I always have goals at the end of that also. Um, and having conversations around that, because those are the things that'll be helping us get to that, um, to that mission statement. So that was my, my comment based on different conversations that I had with staff. Um, and then also that, you know, the pathways, making sure we staff and that we have that conversation of how um, that graphic that's been in our buildings for a while now, you know, how does that connect in with, with all of our work um, with this? So, um, so sort of general statements, uh, but hopefully it's, it's not, this isn't the only input time that we'll have other opportunities to, to talk about some of those other values and, and vision coming up. Thanks. Um, we did have an opportunity to visit at a staff meeting. I just showed them the proposed um, one that came from our cabinet meeting. Uh, or as an ALC staff, they appreciated the use of the word citizens and lifelong learners because that communicated a dedication to individuals for years to come, not just in the here and now. You're not my student just now, but what do we want for you in the future beyond school? And so they appreciated that. Although I do recognize Johanna's staff's concern of the word citizen. Um, that did not come up in our conversation, but I recognize that that could be a concern. Um, so I think lifelong learners speaks to that. Um, felt that it hits everything as a school we stand for. We've talked often about the fact with an ALC that we are serving students in unique circumstances. And so we like that it includes individuals. It speaks to the importance of treating all students as individuals and meeting each of their needs in all of those categories, academic, social, and emotional. Um, and our deeper discussion also involves Yep, we can say that, but what does that mean? What does it look like? How do we reach that whole child? So it can be in our statement. How are we going to back it up and provide that for our students? Okay, uh, next one. And uh, let's read the comment. Thought it should start with the district. Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, sir. Um, we had the opportunity to actually have discussion at a staff meeting um, after last cabinet or two cabinets ago. And um, really good feedback and good discussion. Um, really they'd like it to start with the district rather than uh, just so it has more introduction. And um, it was really a struggle with the word insure, which is similar to a couple of other districts. So they came up with some other suggestions, uh, provide and afford. Um, but other than that, it really, I think, a big piece of this was just talking about student growth and why are we here. Um, that's what I really appreciated out of this. So. Great, thanks. We can leave that on. Um, 
So uh, go back. I'm going to go back to something Steve had said. This and the, uh, the what we noted our current mission statement has been around for probably three decades, and and so it's not something that you change uh, very frequently. And there's a reason for that because it's supposed to be something that you can aspire to, uh, uh, the stated in the mission in the vision. So we don't want to rush into a new mission and vision. So there is going to be more time for more input. What we'd like to come out of here tonight with is so now some board input with all of you up here as a possible restated mission, and then we will do round two. But every round that goes, there's less acceptance of wordsmithing and uh, mm -hmm. punctuation changes. I think it's the ideas that are important. And once you get a good mission statement and a good vision statement, mm -hmm. then you can start to map your tactics and your goals through the pathway document, and that tells the board where we should be spending our money, what we should be approving, what we shouldn't be approving. That's how it should work. So we can do a couple things. We can ask, we can go around and try to come up with a different word for citizen, a different word for insurer. Uh, we can spend a few minutes doing that. Um, we can ask the cabinet to come up with something that's acceptable to all those members and the, board and the principals and then they can take it back to the teachers. So I'm gonna start asking board members for some input now. What would you like to do? Do you have, what about what you've heard tonight? I'll start with you, Julie, since you're sitting right there. Um, I I think the insurer, I hear what people are saying with that word. I like encourage. I think it's a good action word um, because even though we want growth for every single individual student and child, I mean, growth isn't a guarantee necessarily, but encouraging that, so I, I like that idea. Citizens, I don't have a solution to that yet or an idea. Okay. Dave, any comments, questions? Ensure, you know, enable, you know, kind of a, a similar type of thing. Um, I guess um, I hear what Johanna says about the citizen part, and I agree with what's being said about misinterpretation, but I also would like to think of us more as citizens of the Albert Lee Public Schools. We, I mean, we don't just have one citizenship in my mind. I mean, you know, he's pointing in different directions. I think the citizens was more coming out of the, of the school system is the way I was looking at it when we originally had it. I wasn't looking at it as citizenship okay. because I didn't see the shift in there anyway. Okay. Jill? Um, thanks. Ashley, can you bring the, that one back up? As, uh, as far as the insurer, I, I think I would be open to a number of different words in there. I do agree with the citizens um, that it should be changed to something, such as community members. I did like that one. And I guess for me, um, this piece of the mission to me is a broader piece than just being a citizen in school, but it's, it's a broader community um, engagement. And I noticed that um, Hawthorne changed engaged to responsive and productive, which I thought was interesting. So you kind of pulled out even that engaged part of it. But I, I would um, be for changing citizens to something else. Okay. Linda? Um, actually, I'm, I'm a Google person, and I actually, Merriam-Webster says that a definition of a student actually is a person who lives in a particular place is one of the definitions of um, citizens. So, I, I do understand what you're saying about citizen, but I also think that it, we could still keep citizen in there because it's a person who lives in a particular place or a student of you know in the community. I would think so. Um, insure reminds me of um, isn't there like a baby formula called insure or something like that? I don't know. So I think <laughs> sorry. Um, I think insure could be changed as well. I mean, could be changed. I don't really know for sure what to, but I, I could, we could do that, so. Okay. <laughs> Bill? Well, I'm not a wordsmither. Good. <laughs> so what I appreciated from the discussion is that the uh, gist of the mission statement is intact. Um, I didn't hear anybody <laughs> saying that we're going the wrong direction with that. So that's the part that I appreciated the most as far as how we get at, uh, you know, dealing with some of the, uh, the nuances of it, um, you know, I, I leave that for somebody that has better skills than I do. But I like the fact that we have the lifelong learner 
uh, still in there, uh, the academic, social, and emotional piece. I mean, it just, it, it's a nice, strong mission statement, how we put it together to make it make sense. Tying it back to the Pathways document, I think that's a valid uh, comment, you know, making sure that those two are tied some, some way. So, okay. that'd be about it. Justine? But it's really important. So I'm glad we have it in there. Okay. Mike and Lori, do you have any comments? I, I can tell you where the insurer came from. Okay. Can you hear those two ladies who just talked earlier tonight? Okay. That's where the insurer came from. Okay. Um, okay. And that is a guaranteed and viable curriculum. And so when we are ensuring that a student at Helverson Elementary has the same education that a student at Sibley Elementary does. Um, that, that is where at the district level we're, we're using the word ensure. So that, that's my only two cents on it. And I, I appreciate, it's great to hear the different perspective from each building because each building has a different view of the world. And so the citizenship piece, that, that, I found that was fascinating. I, I don't particularly have any new ideas, but um, I guess I, I would like to continue to consider the word citizen. I think there's a lot of benefits to that and uh, how it can be defined, what's the meaning of it, uh, we could still discuss. And um, that the word ensure, I think we could probably find some other options that would still give the message that we want, uh, an action type verb. Okay. I think that's, that's a good discussion. So, again, we have some options here. We can sit down and try to come up with one, or we can ask uh, the non-board members that are up here to get one and bring it back to the board uh, for us to react to as a board uh, with input from teachers and so you have more chance to discuss it. Steve? Yeah. We actually spent quite a bit of time as a cabinet when, when we were laying the, the first sort of draft out. We spent a lot of time on that word ensure, and we wanted it to be a strong word. So, I mean, I even, and no, this is no offense to Hawthorne, the encourage is one that we probably would have said is not as strong as ensure because you can encourage and you can kind of throw it out there, and if they don't get it, then that's okay. Mm -hmm. We want it to be that it's not okay, that we want all students to, to learn. So, so we did spend a lot of time on ensure, and, um, so it, it is a, you know, I, it's an important word that I think will kind of make or break however we, we do that first part, but it has to be strong, and it has to say that we are going to, we had guarantee in there for a while, we thought, no, we took guarantee out, but just that there is no excuses, we need to do what's best for kids, and, and so that's why, that's why that word's there, so I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Um, so I think I'd be in favor of sending it back to that group to come up with something that they can all support uh, and then let us react to that again. Is that acceptable to everyone up here? Okay. Um, any other discussion about this item? That's a good discussion. Any feedback on the values? Uh, did you have those in your buildings or at the cabinet level? Can you bring those back up? Similar to some that we have now, we added the innovation and agility because change in the world is happening much quicker than it used to, and so we need to be able to react to that. Uh, we wanted to add the community partnership. Any from the building principals, any comments? Any? That's the first you've seen those? Okay. Well, we the first we talked slide. about them. We just didn't oh, bring it. We went through them. That's the cabinet, okay. We went through them, but we didn't bring it. We brought the mission to a staff. Yeah. So that also would be something that on the second rendition, to, you know, just to get some input on those. Um, and then the primary needs, uh, the primary value, the needs of the student come first. So, I'd, I'd, you know, that would be good to have some input on that as well. So we'll, we'll send it back to the cabinet level and out to the buildings and discuss it with the teachers and then we'll react to something soon. Again, I don't want to go. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Can you put those up, Ashley? Yeah. So the safe and healthy schools. I think that most people know what safe schools. What do we mean by healthy schools? 
What does that mean? Good question. I guess I'll just answer it off the top of my head before Mike does. So healthy schools, we're responsible for the air quality. And so are the HVAC systems working? Is the air balance, is the temperature right? Um, are, and then another thought I have is, are all the students that are supposed to be immunized, immunized? If they're not, what's our, what's our policy to get them immunized? So those kind of general health, including uh, responses to, you know, shooters in the building and security a little bit safety, but also with regards to health, so. And the, the blue zone, the, the healthy yeah, nutrition. part really came from the blue zone piece. Okay. And, yeah. uh, you know, water in the vending machines, um, yeah, establishing policies that are promoting a healthier school district. Um, you know, we, we've talked, uh, well, I mean, they meet with Ellen probably two, three times a year, Ellen Kerr from the blue zones on what we're doing for healthy schools. So, um, Healthy, healthy initiatives for our students. Um, so that, that's kind of where that came okay, from. Okay, that's what oh, I thought. Nice. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Can I just add? I guess for me, when I see that piece, I do bring in that the whole child piece too with the social and emotional health. Mm -hmm. And I, I would love to see, I know <laughs> money is tight, but I would love to see more in that emotional health piece. Okay. At some point. So you're thinking like the well rounded I, uh, student. Yeah. Not just the academic, yeah. Not just nutrition. Overall health, mm -hmm. mental health, mm -hmm. physical health, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, great discussion. Thank you. Let's go to the next. Keep going there. So uh, you may have seen on the Facebook page these proposed logos, which we've asked people to uh, vote on. Um, in July, the district's going to update the website. And so again, maybe a chance to come up with a new logo. I don't have a slide of the old logo, but you know, it's the book with the quill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not. But so there's a chance to have a new logo uh, on the new website. And so, so these are these are two that uh, we had out there. The other thought I had just a little bit ago is this something we could have out for the students or a community to have a contest of some kind, and then we can react to the top three and put those on the Facebook page and have people vote on those. So. We're starting to think about a new logo. I'm, and again, I don't do Facebook, but I've been told the one on the right has more thumbs up or whatever there. I think I, think I was told today it was 65 to 15 or something, one on the right over the one on the left. Okay. So I, I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. We're thinking about changing the logo. What, what, do, what do people think about having a contest about it to let other people submit ideas? First, then somebody has to decide, which is a whole other issue, but it uh, <laughs> can be fun. So we'll, we'll, we'll think about that and see how that could play out. Next one. And then I wanted to, to use the balance of our time. We can take as much time as we need to talk about any you know items in your buildings. Uh, I want to hear about your you know, the culture in your buildings, uh, teaching staff, retention of teachers. Uh, and then any other items that you think the board should hear so that when we are up here making decisions, we have your direct input on those items. And I thought I would just go again in a round table and ask everybody to make some comments first and then maybe we can have some discussions and then get the board members involved. Um, and so I think uh, maybe we'll start over here with Diane again. And start with the newbie, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Well, and it's, well a, and it's a big, it's a big topic. So it is a big topic. So just and, whatever, you know, yep. whatever you want to say or what comes well, to your mind. I always go back to the comment or the, the quote that says culture eats structure for breakfast and um, we need to have that healthy culture and it, being new and coming from a district where I didn't have as much support as I have, I can't say enough for coming here and listening to sitting at an administrative table and everybody, truly, the discussion always goes back to the child. I go to my staff, and it always goes back to the child. When I was hired, I, you know, or was offered the job, I talked with Dr. Funk, and he's one of the main reasons I said yes, because when I spent, I don't know, I think three hours, my husband and I spent with him, um, a lot of our discussions came back to what's best for our kids. That's the bottom dollar. and. That's whenever we're having discussions anywhere I go, I feel like that's what it's all about. And that makes the culture strong. 
and knowing, yep, we have tough decisions to make because we're in the buildings and we know what's going on and um, we have to do what's best for our kids and sometimes that's making hard decisions, but I think we have a lot of great things going on here and I'm pleased as punch, it's kind of a lame statement, but to know that the culture here is amazing and I, I couldn't say enough about the district in where we're going and what we're doing and how our discussions are. It's never about, oh, you know, Mark, I want to steal your staff and I'm going to throw him you know, under the butt. It's all, we're all in this together. And it's such a great feeling. That's not what I've always had. And coming here new, it's, it's just a strong, great feeling. So all across the board, I have so much support and we hear great things from staff and yep, there's, there's things that go on and we have to you know, make tough decisions, but I just want to start with that, and I'm going to let everybody else talk. I have more to say, but that's just one thing I want you to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Karen? Uh, okay. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Um, when, I, when I thought about this discussion earlier today, I just jotted down several <coughs> bullets that I think really define Hawthorne, and I really focus on Hawthorne, although I do echo what my, my dear colleague says because... Um, it's just a fabulous team, and it's part of the reason I stay here. Um, the people I work with are fabulous in my building and outside my building. But when I think of Hawthorne, I would just tell you <coughs> that we have a powerful belief in our students. I mean, they, it, it happens every day, all day long. And that belief really um, propels us to give them all the supports they need in their instruction. I would say to you that um, if you walk through the doors of our school, that you know that we really work on relationships. And we know that's the foundation for all academic success. And so we work with families. We get to know every single child in our, in our school, and we know them really well. And I, that is um, very true. I would also say to you, when I look at our staff um, at Hawthorne and even across the elementaries that I'm, I've worked with, is that there is powerful collaboration happening in these schools. And it isn't just with PLCs. It, it goes all the time. Um, it, it extends into their grade level meetings. They're walking out for recess. They're still talking about the math lesson. And they are all the time sharing ideas and, and collaborating on what's best for kids. Um, we, we do have a great deal of trust for each other at Hawthorne School. I think our trust is very strong. Um, we do what we say we're going to do. And our kids know it, and our staff members do. I would lastly say to you that um, the school culture at Hawthorne is extremely positive. I, we welcome everyone in, and we accept them for who we are, they are. And we, we just take them where they're at, and we go. And, um, and you know, this whole thing, I, I, write, I tell you all these things, but really, you know what it comes down to is I love kids. And so do, so do the people on our staff. They really dig kids. And um, we just have a good time. So I think that's really what gets us up every morning. So it's, good. it's a good place. Thank you. Yeah. Culture is an interesting thing to talk about because it depends when you're doing it, what you're talking about. <laughs> Give me about another week after we're done with testing, I can tell you culture will change differently in our building. Um, we have a unique building, it's 8 through 12. I would say overall that mm -hmm. staff uh, are very positive about what's going on. They know there needs to be change sometimes, um, very dedicated staff. Um, is the culture changing? Yes. It's a culture of, you know, students come first. Um, I'm always saying it's a great day to be a tiger and it kind of rubs off on people. We have brought some people in to talk about culture and work with people. Um, I think the biggest takeaway I take this year is uh, one of our teachers has been there a number of years, held their ID up one day and said, here's my ID from two years ago. I was not a good teacher. Here's my ID from last year. I still wasn't a good teacher. Here's my ID from this year. I'm getting there. I'm working on it. So I think people, uh, you know, if you look back to the mission statement, there's a lot of things we're trying to cover at the high school. It's not just academics. It's the social. It's the emotional. It's all those things. Um, we have a very open door policy in our building with our administrators and our teachers. We're always out and about um, seeing things. So I think uh, kids are happy. That's why that's how I determine if we're being successful is what I hear from parents and students. How are the students feeling when they come to school? Do they want to come to school? 
Um, and we have things to work on just like everywhere. We're not perfect. Um, I'll never be really excited like the elementary principals, per se, um, <laughs> and all f flowers and bulletin boards and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, we're, we're getting kids prepared for that next level. And, you know, we keep emphasizing, you know, I think the, what the board did with the pathways is really getting back to the staff because not every student needs to go to a four-year school. And that whole concept is it's a huge change for people. And so accepting students where they're at and what they need to do and, you know, being different, um, you know, it doesn't matter what color your hair is or different things like that, just being accepted in the school. And we see some great things. Uh, I was observing a teacher today, and one of our special ed students was talking about getting to go to prom. And she was so excited because a very popular boy asked her to go to prom. And I think that speaks a lot about the culture of acceptance. Um, you see a lot of our kids high-fiving each other in the hallway that te typically are segregated. Um, I've seen kids in the lunchroom that will go and say, hey, girls, close. How should we go about asking that kid to eat lunch with us? Because we don't want them to feel weird. You know, you have five kids go up to one student and ask, I said, how about tomorrow you invite them to the table with you and stuff. So student-wise, I think things are good. Staff are working on it. You know, it's always, what do we do to promote students, you know? Thank you. Okay. I think as an ALC, I really find that my staff is dedicated to those students that are in special circumstances. They wouldn't keep coming back every single day if they weren't. Um, and we have challenging students. Um, I appreciate the collaboration that I have with the high school. I think the high school guidance department and the administrative staff at the high school, um, we're communicating really well together to identify those students that are at risk and um, determining what each of those individual students needs to be successful. And so I appreciate that. I appreciate that our staff is able to have those courageous conversations because they can be really challenging at times and they keep coming back to the table to have those conversations. And I think for us, it speaks in our results. We were visiting a little bit before the board meeting started about how many graduates we're gonna have this year. It's so exciting to see our students earning more credits. And not only the number of credits we earned, but the percent of students that are earning credit. Because that's what I wanna see. I wanna see that more students are earning credit more regularly, not just the number of credits <coughs> skyrocket. And so that speaks to that percent of students that are earning credit and we talked about um, our four-year and five-year graduation rates are getting better as well. So instead of hanging on to them two years, three years past their graduation date, are we getting them to graduate on time or one year past their graduation date? So I think the dedication my staff has to that is very powerful um, and it speaks from the results. I think if there's a challenge for us as a staff, it's um, each, Obviously, one core content area for each teacher. I have one English teacher, one math teacher, one, you know, so I think for us that collaboration piece is something that we often have to work on and we have to work hard at and not, not always be in your frame of mind of I'm an English teacher, I do English, I'm a social studies teacher, I do social studies. How can we work collaboratively um, and meet the needs of students regardless of what our content areas are? So if there's one thing in my staff culture that I want to work on, it's collaboration between their content areas. Thanks. Steve? Well, I'm like girls' calls. I like, um, I like cheering and I like um, having um, bulletin boards and, and all this. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you know, I, I will echo what they said about it. I, 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 I love a lot of things his way and, and other people's way just because um, I really do enjoy the, the collaboration that we have as a admin team. Um, it is, um, it, it makes every day, you can always pick up the phone. If you're not feeling well, like there's some time where I wasn't feeling well, people calling me and checking on me, and so it was, it was cool. Um, but I, in terms of Southwest, I think my, um, my biggest description of Southwest um, in, is that it, we're, we're pretty much a family. And, and you, you ask people in the building, and I think they'll say that. You have, um, you know, you have the, the brother who says something bad and everybody has to get on him, or you have little, little things that are going on here and there in, uh, in the family, and, and you work them out. Um, you have difficult times, you have happy times, um, you know, and all those things. We've had quite a bit of, I guess, you know, thinking of my three years, the end of my first year, 
you know, we had some, uh, some people go and take another job somewhere. Um, and, and actually each, each end of the school year has brought that, just a couple of people who, you know, and they make the decision because it's closer to their home and they live in Austin. So they went to, you know, it was one of those decisions, not like I got to get out of Albert Lee. And it really, it rocked our family for a little bit, um, having those, those people. And I know that they, you know, they came in and they talked to me and said, you know, I, I don't want to leave, but I can walk to work. Okay, well, I mean, what do you, what do you say to that? So, um, but I do think that that family culture, um, I'll be sitting at my desk and, um, and, if, and if my door is open, if I'm not on the phone, I can hear people laughing in the, in the staff lounge. That's mostly Jackie Cromwell because she laughs really loud. But, um, but today I heard, I heard other people laughing. I mean, they're, they're laughing so loud. Like one day I actually went back to and I'm like, okay, you know, just hold on and you know, keep it down a little bit back here. So, um, not that every day is, is laughing and, 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 and things, but I think um, that family aspect, it really does tell you a lot about our, our culture. Um, I was telling uh, Karen today what, that... Um, I, I wanted to get two things done before I got here, and I didn't because people had come in, and, and I got to thinking, you know, people, if my door is open or my shades are up, people come and talk. And to me, that's the most important gauge. You know, when people stop coming and talking to me, then I, then I get a sense that there's something wrong with the culture. So um, we're, we're, we're fine with disagreeing. We're fine with having discussions. Um, but in, in the end, it always comes back to kids and it comes back to what are we going to do. And um, I think our, our biggest challenge at Southwest uh, right now, and, and, and Mark hit the nail on the head with once testing season's done, you know, things change. Everybody's just, you know, their shoulders tense up, and, and we, we're nervous for, for how our kids are going to achieve. And, um, but I think that comes from um, a, a deep sort of frustration of we want – uh, we want our kids to be better on, uh, not just on those tests, but we want them to, to rise um, to where we want them to rise. So I think that's, that's probably our biggest challenge is, um, as a staff, what, are we, what can we do um, when we're not getting the results that we know that we need to get? And I think that's our, that's our, our greatest challenge. Thanks. Jenna? So Ed Halverson and, and the other elementary principals said it so eloquently. Um, it, it really is about relationships. The teachers in my building know our families so well. Um, and so they also know with everything that they believe in that families want a, a good education for their kids. And so what they do all day is try to figure out how to, how to do that. What are the resources that we can tap into? What can we increase instructionally for them? What opportunities can we increase? And um, they work really, really well at that. Um, I have some really awesome conversations about with teachers about what more can I do? What more can I do for this family? What more can we do for this student? Um, I would say one of my, my challenges is when teachers come to me and they want that, they want more information or they want more skills on how they can assist somebody is getting that to them as quickly as we can. One of the things that's, that I've noticed this year that's really increasing those opportunities for our teachers, and which is then uh, falling into increasing those opportunities for the students, is the instructional coaches. And it's really diving into what that teacher needs, wants to get better at, is identifying what they want to need to get better at, and, um, and also our gifted and talented program is really increasing opportunities for our kids, whether it, it, um, it be the, the once a week that carries over throughout the week that Gail Brownlow is doing with the kids, um, or the programs outside that she's seeking out for our students to be involved in. We have a very high number of students that are involved in those, in those uh, programs. And, um, you know, we've... <coughs> We're doing everything we can. We've got breakfast for everybody now. It's been a huge success. The kids are enjoying it. They like it. They're happy to have it. Parents have told me that they're very happy with it. Um, this week, we have 77 students that are going to get their teeth cleaned. 
uh, for the second time this year. And um, I, I think our, our teachers are doing everything that they wanna do. And that's what's best for kids. And they're fig figuring out how to do that. Uh, one of the overlying things that I came up with as I was thinking about tonight is um, our teachers and our discussions and our staff, not just our teachers, uh, consider kids student by student. When we have discussions about kids, um, it's not about a whole group of kids, it's about that student. And so when we have meetings about, um, we call them data meetings, and it's not just all data, it's kids that we're talking about. Uh, we're, we're looking at each kid individually and are we getting them everything we can possibly get to them if they're above grade level, below grade level, at grade level. And um, that's what I feel coming from our discussions with our, with our teachers and the way teachers are practicing their, their craft student by student. Thanks, and, and we appreciate all, all that feedback. Is there, are there particular I heard a couple of challenges. Are there particular challenges do you think the board should know about as we go through our planning processes, ways that the board can help with uh, you know, teaching, learning, your buildings? What are, what are some challenges? I would, I would ask them this question. And they have, they have no idea that, that I'm going to ask you to ask them this question. But well, why don't you just ask them? <laughs> Honestly, from because we heard great things about going on in the district, okay? Two, two, three words here, three or four words, okay? First one is something called fidelity, okay? What does that mean? How does that add stress to your teachers in your buildings? And the second thing, and particularly at the secondary level, this whole concept of guaranteed and viable curriculum, how is that impacting morale, stress? Uh, of the, of the staff members in your building. So that's what I would. Maybe I want to take that first before I call on somebody. Who likes to call on people? Mark, you want it? Mark? Mark's reaching for a microphone. I'll jump in on the guaranteed viable curriculum. Um, I can ensure the board that we have a guaranteed viable curriculum right now. We're going through a lot of work. Kathy's knee board has been a huge asset. We're making strides. We think we know what we're doing is good, but we need to verify that. We got to look at what other people are doing. And so, um, you know, typical American high school, uh, I'm the social studies teacher. Here's the textbook. Go teach. Well, is that really the best way of doing it? Um, and so we're looking at it. It's not comfortable to do that. It's not comfortable for someone that's done it 10, 15, 20 years to say, we're questioning what you're doing. Not that you're a bad teacher or anything, but is this what's relevant to students today? So, you know, the whole guaranteed viable curriculum, that makes us nervous, it makes me nervous. Um, and we just bit off one, one large department this year, English. What does a viable curriculum look like? when we know the statistics are coming back that's saying kids are taking remedial things in college. And so as a professional, I think you're seeing this across the United States, across Minnesota, is looking at what that viable curriculum is. So this is public's asking to make sure that we provide their students with what's needed. And so it's not comfortable. It's just like, I assume as a surgeon, if they bring in a new technique, it's, I've done this, I've done how many knee surgeries over my life, I know what I'm doing, and somebody comes in and says, hold it, we want you to rethink that. And so is it something that makes people nervous? Yeah. Um, I think we're doing it in a positive atmosphere. We're doing it, we're bringing up those questions, letting people speak about it. It's not a, here you go, here's what you're teaching. Um, so um, I'm sure that's probably the building you hear most about the guaranteed viable curriculum is at the secondary level of what does this mean and how are we going about it? And, you know, are there things we've done probably for the last 20 years? Yeah, we need to change some of those things. So. And that level of stress is that level of stress is 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 a byproduct of that. And, and I, I'm I'm thinking of you know my two seventh grade teachers, uh, language arts teachers who are jumping in with with both feet, and they were at that training that we did um, when we were looking at unpacking the standards, and they they had sort of the deer in the headlights a little bit, but then when it was go time, they got down to it, and they've actually had um, at least one work day, um, one professional day together where they collaborated and continued the work on their 
and you start to see, not that, not that they're almost done, but they, they start, they're starting to see the fruits of their labor a little bit. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a long process, and it's a, um, and I think um, if anybody had, um, had an argument to, to feel threatened, it would be probably those two teachers because there were three or four standards that they found out that they were not teaching that they needed to be teaching. And it wasn't their fault. Uh, it wasn't. It was just part of the last process that was gone through, and we we talked about that at the last at one of the last board meetings. But um, they just rolled up their sleeves, and they then they got to it. And it's providing the time, it's providing the support, um, and just and saying to them, it's okay. You, you don't have to get it all done. And 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 yeah, there's going to be an increased level of, of stress, and that's okay. You know, the the change in education is always so slow. That's the most frustrating thing that I have. Um, that we have to sell it, and we have to have buy-in, and we have to get, and that's good, but at some point, we have the, the end result is we, we need to do better by our kids, and, and it's going to be hard work, but we're going to support you and, and be there for you. Yeah, go ahead. Notably in reading and notably in math now. And I would say to you, yes, we still have our art of teaching, our craft of teaching and art of teaching, but we are really sticking with the standards and the core, rigorous core instruction that every child should get. Um, do we have a ways to go? Absolutely. We're still working on science. We're still working on social studies, to be honest with you. We're still working on gifted and talented and growth opportunities for innovation. But um, I would say we've got an incredible start. And it's because of the people that are supporting us and providing staff development for our teachers. And for those of us who have systems in place, and we all do at the elementaries, when we're checking in with teachers, how's that pacing calendar coming? What unit are you on? And I can tell you pretty much within a one or two week span, everybody's pretty much in the same spot. So um, we do have, there's a lot of, it's much tighter than it was previously, and I think our kids are so much better for it. Thanks. Other comments about that topic? Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about that fidelity word. I think coming in new, you know, we're like, I mean, the big piece is we want to make sure we're all on the same page. Doesn't matter which, and we want that guaranteed and viable curriculum. If my child is going into that classroom, that classroom, that, that classroom, they're getting the same piece. I think the hardest thing, though, is people interpreting what that fidelity means. And it's gotten to be like, they feel like we're rigid. And so right now we're really looking at that. Teachers are feeling comfortable about speaking up and going, oh, okay, I, I, I don't get that. Why are they doing that? Why are so we're working through some of those pieces of teachers saying, I feel like I, I need a little bit more for this child, but I feel like I'm stuck with this. So we're talking about what does that really mean? Um, people are overanalyzing it maybe, but they're feeling like it's too rigid. And so we're working through you know, those pieces, but it's that communication piece of the teachers feeling comfortable coming to all of us and saying, I'm struggling. And then, okay, we know we're moving this direction. Are you on the cha change is hard for everyone too. Um, and are you on the train when we're moving? What can I do to support you? It's not that we want you to fail, but are you on the train moving forward with us and making sure people are coming along? And sometimes there's uncomfortable conversations um, along with that, but that's part of, the, part of the process. We have to have those to make sure that we're moving in that same direction. So do we have people that are unhappy with us sometimes? Yep, it's part of the job, um, but we just have to be honest and open and knowing that this is where we need to go, and bottom dollar, like I said right away, we're doing what's best for kids, but we want people to come forward and say, I'm confused about this, I need this, giving time and support to make sure that we're doing that, and I, I, I believe that staff are feeling like they are comfortable saying, I'm confused by this, I don't understand this, um, I'm struggling with this, and having that open communication to say, okay, what does that look like? We come back, we bring that back with Mary Jo and Kathy, all of us saying, okay, this is what they're feeling. What do we need to do to help us continue moving forward without them saying, whoa, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. We have to keep them going and moving, so. Well, thank you. Other comments about 
fidelity. Does that answer get to your? We, we don't have the the F word isn't gotten into the middle school yet. I mean, we're, you know, it's just because we're still we're still wrestling with, you know, we still have to decide what that F is going to be. You know, um, right? <laughs> um, so I think you know that it's just that we're at we're in a. I think it's okay that we're in a different spot, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I think Karen said it best when she said that's how you felt five years ago, and that's that's okay. But we have to continue mm -hmm. to to move forward and, right. and and get going when i think it's it's you know t encouraging staff to take risks too we're going to make mistakes it's just part of the party we're going to make mistakes and it's okay to do that and really saying what we've done all these years if it's not working why are we continuing to do it and does that make some people unhappy mhm mm what, what can I do to help make that change? And that's where we're all here. And like Johanna said, our instructional coaches have been phenomenal in helping people come in and model and give them that support where they can say, oh, I am doing this right, or oh, I could look at this differently. It's that comfort piece of putting themselves on the line and saying, you know what? I don't know everything. We can't. And that's that lifelong learner piece of our vision. We all are lifelong learners, and you know what? Whoever has been in this profession for 25 years, I don't know everything, and there's a lot I can learn, and that's the best thing. I have people to collaborate with. I have people to bring in, and we have all those pieces to help us move forward. Great. Other board members have other comments or questions at this time? Anything else uh, the principals want to bring up? Any other topics? Anything you haven't said that you wish you'd said? No, I guess uh, any Mike. Any other comments, Lori? All right. Well, I appreciate that everybody came oh, and we, uh, we had an open discussion. Yeah. Yeah, I just had a comment before before we close. I'm glad that we had a discussion about culture because culture is not a bad word, <laughs> and it's important to talk about. Um, and I do appreciate all of our um, principals being here tonight. Um, I guess. I want to just clarify comments that I've made on culture in the past. And when I'm talking about culture, um, I'm talking about the district culture, which is the enveloping culture of, of all of us, obviously. And, and that rests firmly upon the shoulders of those of us who normally sit at this table. You know, how, what does that culture look like and what do we want it to look like? And so um, I guess I have. Uh, couple um, thoughts there that I've heard. And I've heard, um, I guess I've heard a lot of input from um, people in the district. And um, they are appreciating that we're talking about culture. And, and I appreciate that the, the buildings are doing what they can you know, to make their best culture in their building. Um, and, but some of the things district-wide that I'm hearing is um, that the teachers and staff as professionals don't have the input that they would like district-wide, which I, I'm, I'm glad that this mission statement went you know, down to the teacher uh, level to get their, their input, but um, that everything seems top-down and not bottom up. So that is one question I'd like to know from the principals. How can we help empower you and teachers and staff to have um, that input come back? And the other piece of that is that um, there is a reluctance to, to, I guess, to share openly because um, I believe in the past it hasn't always been um, uh, been responded to in a positive manner. And I know everyone here is relatively new <laughs> in your positions, and perhaps there was a lot of water that went under the bridge, you know, before even that. But um, just to have that openness in in being able to bring something maybe even contrary to what we are determining as the district to move ahead with, having a differing opinion is a healthy thing, you know, and those discussions are healthy. It's healthy to have that back and forth, the pros and cons. That's, I think, how we all grow. And I, I feel like that um, 
is an area for growth, I guess. And even here at, at the board level, it has felt to me like an area for growth. So those two pieces, how can we empower um, you as principals to, um, I guess, allow the teachers to have their voice and allow it to come to us at the board level? I think the, um, I've, already, I've had teachers stop me and, 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 and reference the surveys that they've been filling out. Mm -hmm. So I think they really, I think they're liking that piece. And, and I, um, can I respond? I guess I didn't ask. Yeah, no, Are you still doing board oh, things? No. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. I thought you said principal, so I didn't yeah. know. Um, so I do think that that is, that is positive. And, and I think people like the, they like the aspect that they can, they can make comments and it's not, you know, it's not, goes right back to them, or it goes right back to who made the comment. They can make a, they can make their, their comments and it's, it's anonymous or however it is. But, um, but the, the, you know, just for the professional development stuff was very positive. Um, but there were also things that, that are areas that I need to grow, you know, as a building. And, and people actually, the, the really fun, not funny, the, the odd thing was people would come up to me and say, hey, Hey, did you see the comment about this? And I said, Oh yeah. They said, Oh, I made that one. You know, I said, Oh, that's good. I mean, so there's an open conversation, and and I said, You know, it, it hits the nail right on the head. Yeah, we talk a lot, and we need to make more decisions. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, those are, are things that I think um, they value, and and I'm glad that we're we're doing those um, those online surveys. So when you're and this is for anybody, when, when you're out talking, I mean, are you getting the feeling that oh, I can't talk to you because that might get back to me, or I mean, is it is it do you have, does anybody get any of that from staff, teachers or staff, otherwise? I can say as a, a new person, I mean, I, that's what I encourage. I've had a lot of staff come in and, you know what, we're going to agree to disagree. And they've been very open with, you know what, this really has ticked me off or this has been great. And those are conversations. It's great. We need to have those conversations. And the other piece is... As we look, going, we're listening. We are. And we sometimes we have to let go of the past. And we have to say, we're making headway, and we want to do what's best. And yeah, maybe there were some bad decisions that have been made in the past. But you know what? Let's get over it, and let's move on, and let's do what's best, and let's make good decisions from here on out, because we all make mistakes, and we all do you know great things. And I think, as administration, we sit here and go, yeah, that maybe didn't go so well. And that's what I love about this place. I can come in and we can say, you know what? There's been some things, but how do we change that? And I think that's our job here to say, you know what? Let's portray that as we're moving forward. Yeah, maybe we've made some mistakes, but we're, by gosh, we're good. And we have good plans in place. And I, I, I can't, I can't tell you as a new person how proud I am to be here. And yeah, I heard a lot of baggage before I came here. I worked with people that have worked in this district. They moved and maybe they weren't happy, but you know what? I, I put that beside me and said, you know what? Bottom dollar is we're doing what's best for kids. And by golly, let's go forward. Let's, let's praise all the great things we're doing. Let's have great conversations and disagree, but let's move on and let the past be past and move on because we have a lot of great things going on and everybody here really truly wants what's best for kids and that's why I love being here and that's why I'll stay here as long as that's, you know, I bought a house in town, I joined a church and I'm, I'm here because this is a great place. So let's move forward, let's, as, let's work together as a board and administration and do what's best for our kids and let's portray, you know what, yep, those are things that were happening in the past, but things are changing. I want you guys as board members, come into all of our buildings. We have great things that are happening. Talk to the teachers and see those changes that are happening. It hasn't always maybe been that way, but by gosh, it's changing. We've got great things happening in Albert Lee and let's be proud of that and let's focus on the positive and move forward. Um, and, you know, it, it goes back to when Dr. Funk came into uh, his position. Uh, what he asked of uh, the board members, um, his department heads, his principals, was a, a very lengthy sheet of questions. And I remember one question in particular with regards to, um, you know, if there's one thing you could change in the district, what would it be? Um, one of our biggest strengths that we had in the school district prior to Dr. Funk was we had great innovation going on in all the buildings. There was 
great things happening in every single building. The bad thing about it was it wasn't getting transferred to the next building or to the next classroom. There was no collaboration going on. And so we have this great think tank, but we didn't have anything pulling it together. And so to do that, you have to do a district focus. You have to do somewhat of a top-down approach to it to be able to provide some continuity and some direction and some focus to that. And so with that, uh, if you are great innovators and now you're being told you're going to be doing it in such a way, you're going to have a lot of stress and a lot of angst with regards to this new working environment. And that's what we've been experiencing over the last four, five, six years, especially when you have to be able to make some really tough choices with regards to where you're putting teachers to be able to get that dispersed throughout every building. So I think that was a big issue for this district and it's a holdover right now. Um, approachability. I think right now is probably at a high in this district. What I kept hearing was you can't model uh, from a teacher to a, a parent the openness that I'm hearing across the table unless it's happening from the principal to the teacher to the district head to the principals. I mean it's happening top down, bottom up. And so from what I'm seeing is this district is in a much better position now than it was six to seven years ago with regards to the direction it's going. It's focused. There's good communication going on. And it's kind of like the analogy that I'll use is my wife's a great cook. I tell her every once in a while and sometimes I don't realize it. But when people come into my house, they see that my wife's a good cook. And sometimes I just don't appreciate it. That's the same thing here. We are a great district and sometimes we just don't realize it. Do we want to get better? Most definitely. But that's what I heard tonight, and I really appreciate it. We have a phenomenal staff here. Other comments or questions? All right. Again, I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>